Hi, thanks for clicking on the video. Now, before I get into the information about this playground, I wanted to give you a little explanation about why I'm making this video. So I am the parent to an almost five-year-old child on the autism spectrum who's a very active child, uh, but because of some of the challenges related to his autism, we can only go to a few playgrounds in our area. But because he's getting older, getting bigger, getting more active, he's outgrowing those playgrounds. So I need to start doing research to find new playgrounds to take him to. Um, when I talk about his challenges, the challenges related to his autism, um, in this instance, I'm referring to elopement issues. This is not the case for everyone on the spectrum, but there are people that do have elopement challenges into adulthood. Um, with him, unless he's holding my hand, or we are tethered together by a leash, he's going to run off. He has no instinctual sense of danger, so he could run into traffic. He doesn't understand stranger danger, so he could go off with someone. So we, um, unless, uh, again, as I said, unless he's holding my hand, or um, we are tethered together with a leash, he's going to run off. He's too large for a stroller, so that's not an option either. So if we go to the zoo or to SeaWorld, we are tethered together with a leash because he doesn't want to hold my hand while we're doing all of that walking around the park. So, and it's just a safety measure. Um, so as it pertains to looking for new playgrounds to take him to, there's a few things that I need to keep in mind to keep him safe. And I'm sure if these things pertain to all parents in general, but with most kids, they outgrow these ha these things as they you know they learn um, that you know ca cars coming towards them that's dangerous you should not be running into the road um, my son has not outgrown that and he might not outgrow that for several years so when I'm looking for different playgrounds to take him to these are just a few things that I need to keep in the back of my mind um, because of his different challenges so the first one is that it can't be too close to a busy street and I'm sure that's what most parents would prefer um, but with my child there's always that chance he might run off so um, one park in particular is a very nice playground is there's a playground in Balboa a park that is on Park Boulevard. I, will, I don't take my son there. It's not fenced in. If there's a canyon on the back side of it and it's right by a very busy street. There's too many um, ways for him to run off. It's not fenced in. So that, that is not a playground that I take my son to. So um, again, can't be too close to a busy street. And then I've mentioned the fencing. I try to look on Google Images for playgrounds that are fenced in. At least, you know, the majority of the area is fenced in so that I can um, stay in the area where he might try to run out um, just to be there to um, keep him kind of corralled in the playground area. If it's just an open area with no fencing, that's not a place that I would take my son. Um, something else with my son related to his autism, he has sensory challenges as well, and I can't take him to a playground that has too much sand. Um, if he gets sand in his socks, it's very uncomfortable for him. He tells me that it hurts, so if, so if that is the case, we, will, we won't be at the playground for very long, so I'll try to find playgrounds grounds that have wood chips or that rubbery turf or if it's just brass. But if it's an all-stand playground, I won't take my son to that kind of playground. Um, and then another thing that I look for is uh, playgrounds that are have parking that is reasonably reasonably close to the playground. So in case, you know, he's having a meltdown or a tantrum and he doesn't want to leave and I need to carry him, I need to be able to get to my car fairly quickly because he is a big kid. Um, so those are just a few things that I have to keep in mind when I am doing research uh, for a new playground to take my son to. And I was thinking that this might be uh, the case for other parents out there. So I thought, you know, if this video can help at least one other person, then it was worth it. So I hope this video is helpful for you. In terms of location, this playground is pretty much in the heart of Mission Valley. It's a few city blocks north of all the shopping where like Target and Mission Valley Mall and all that is. It's north of that. I live in the Hillcrest North Park area, so I just went straight down Texas until it dead ended and I was there. Um, if you don't have a vehicle, this is not a place I would recommend you going, especially with a kid in tow. Um, I, we, li we lived without a vehicle for a long time, so when I was looking for new places to take my child, I had to keep in mind how close it was to the trolley, how close it was to the bus. This place is about a 20 minute walk uphill um, from the closest trolley stop. Same as with the bus. The bus only comes like every hour on this particular line, the closest bus stop to this. So again, if you don't have a vehicle, this is not a park I would recommend you take your kid to, but um, easy to get there driving. So I wanted to start out by just showing you an overhead visual of the area in case you haven't been here before so that you know what to expect. 
So when you come up this road, this is all public parking. This is all parallel parking. Um, I would imagine most people, depending if you come later in the day, you're going to have to parallel park here. Um, but you can try your luck. There are two very small public parking lots here. Uh, this is the first one right here. There are four regular spaces and two disabled spaces. And then you would enter the park right here. Down here, there's some basketball courts. Uh, if this lot is full and you want to try a parking lot, the other parking lot, you just keep going up this road. Again, all public parallel parking. The other small public parking lot is right here. Four spots, two disabled spots. And then you enter the park and the playground right here. Now, as far as the playground goes, it is these three levels right here. You can't tell um, in this overhead, but it is, it's on an incline. And uh, this playground area right here, this is um, at the highest point. And this area, I would say, is for your older kids. Um, this right here, is a rock wall and at its highest point it's probably like about eight or nine feet high it's pretty high and then um, this what you see right here that is a little bridge on the playground apparatus that the kids climb up here so they come down here they start at the bottom they climb up around here they walk up and this is all that rubber turf so there's no concrete no sand this is all that rubber turfing and they they walk up here they can come onto the bridge and then they go down the slide right here and then so there is one exit point right here if the kids if you have a kid that's a runner like mine um if if they wanted to they could go out this way and go out and be in the park um so that's one exit area otherwise this this playground area this part of the playground is all fenced in this is all fencing around this area so because my child has elopement issues i kept them up here for the most part um but yeah this this area is definitely going to be for your older kids um i did see some toddlers up there but their parents were holding their hands the entire time because this the the slide and the bridge that you climb up it's pretty high it's a pretty far fall and i did see a child fall while we were there and it's 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 a rough landing so even though they did fall on the rubber um, it's, it's, it's pretty high up there. So just be mindful of that for your smaller ones, but you'll see when you get there. Um, this with the silver overhead, um, that is covered seating. So that's, those are some covered picnic benches. And then if you come down this area, the further down you go, the less fenced in everything is and the more open it is to the park in general. So I kept my child up here because it, this was all fenced in. Um, but when you come down further, this area is going to be more for your preschoolers, more for toddlers. Um, there's, you know, slides and swings and things to climb on, but it's just going to be for the smaller ones that aren't as in control of their bodies yet. And, you know, you don't want them to fall too far. So this was more for the smaller ones. Right here are some swings, um, some more covered seating. This right here is not a play area. This is a display. Um, these are some old, this is some old rock quarry equipment from when this area used to be a quarry. So this is like an old bulldozer and these are just some tools, but I don't think the kids, the, this is all fenced off so the kids should not be accessing this. And then you have some public restrooms. And so this is what the area looks like. This is an older picture. When we went today, this was very much overgrown. This looks like stripped land right now in this photo, but this was um, very overgrown, but the kids can't access this. It is all fenced off. So this is, there's, they can't get in here. So there's no need to worry there. So again, public parking right here, public parking right here. Otherwise, you're going to be parking along the street because everything else all around here, that is all residential area. And this, you can't tell, but this is all on incline. These are all hills, um, hiking trails over here, everything over here, um, very hilly. So um, there, but there are a lot of ramps. So everything is accessible if people are in wheelchairs, but there are a lot of stairs around here as well because it is a very hilly site. Very pretty though. This is the view from the top of the two public parking spots. We got there around 10 a.m., so we were able to get a spot close to the park. And this is that field I was showing before. You can see it's overgrown, but all fenced in. This is a snapshot of the upper area of the playground that I was saying is for the older kids. Uh, they have uh, rope webs for them to climb on. There is a platform swing. Then there's that slide that I mentioned and some climbing apparatuses. And there's also that rock wall that I mentioned. This is a view of the second level area of the playground from the upper level that's down below. You can see that little green slide. That's the toddler area of the playground. As I said before, not as fenced in as the upper area, so I didn't want to go down there with my son just out of safety concerns. 
This is a quick pan of the upper area of the playground. You can see there are some climbing rope webs for the kids to utilize. Uh, you'll see the slide right here. I'm about halfway up to where the kids will walk up a ramp to get to that bridge right here to go over to the slide. Here you see the rock wall. Some of the older kids do climb up this wall instead of using the ramp. This is another quick pan of the upper area of the playground from a different point of view. So you can see the backside of the slide apparatus and how high it is and the climbing equipment. Then also over here, there is a platform swing. And that wraps up this quick little overview of the quarry playground. Hopefully you found this helpful. I plan to do videos like this for future playgrounds that we are going to be visiting. So please be sure to subscribe and come back.